This is Level Up Success Podcast with Neff and Truth. I, mean, I, I know, so you stopped uh, doing trucking, so what, uh, how you, di how did you transition to your next thing? You know, like, well, how was that? Yeah, so I stopped trucking because, um, uh, um, so I was driving nights and I was drinking a lot of energy drinks and I started developing like really bad anxiety and really bad sleeping habits because I was giving my body a shock. Um, mm -hmm. I was giving my body a shock. And then also, like I said, we, you know, I don't have no family out here. It, um, only that friend that brought me out here. So at home, if anything happened at home as a trucker and people that listen to the podcast, I'm a trucker. All you could do is send money home. Like you can't solve no problems. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you know, like we just had a storm. I can't go out there and clear a tree out the driveway. I can't, I can't do none of that stuff. And I don't have nobody to do any of that stuff. So, you know, I decided that, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, and, um, I wanted to drive locally. So, um, like that friend that I had, he had a brother that was, um, He was in a uh, distribution of for Coca Cola, and mm. but he had done beer for um, Budweiser kind of thing. So I was like, "Yo, put me on." Never, you know, I never that he put me on. Ended up getting the job on my own. Uh, yeah, that was taking a toll on my body, and it was like waking up at three in the morning. So I'm like, "Man, locally is also the same thing. I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this." So um, I took a break for a while, you know, just kind of like to gather and think things weren't going the, the, the best for me. Um, so um, so I'm like three months in not working. Um, so, I, you know, I was like, man, I need to get a job at least to pay the phone bill or whatever, because I, I still got income from my um, my investments and stuff like that. But I'm still trying to okay. figure it's not it's not panning out for me right it's not looking of course yeah so um i took a job at a dealership um parking cars like that's what i did so um it was um you know people come in with their cars to the service department i'll take your information down and i'll go park your car you know um so i did that and um um i saw an opportunity I saw um, for the longest, like I worked at a newspaper in New York and there was a guy that told me, yo, you could sell. So I was like, yo, I could never sell. Like I can't talk to people. So I'm like, man, this is my, my chance. I'm like, this is some bullshit job that I'm going through, uh, but I'm talking to people, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm going to like break that ice of could I sell? Could I, you know, really talk to people? So I took it really serious. So um, one advice I want to give the viewers is never go into a job um, thinking about money. You know what I'm saying? Um, never, ne never do that. Um, you can learn a skill in the most BS job and um, your resume. Um, for the longest time, I thought my resume had to do with me going to school. But you could put skills on there that you gain from i don't know anything like if you mm -hmm. ever worked at mcdonald's you did customer service you don't got to say that mm -hmm. you know, is i worked at mcdonald's talking to people you can say customer service you, you did customer yeah. service right so i learned that real quick and then uh, my boss saw it in me and he gave me a sales position there and um i was making the same amount of money um i was doing trucking and then some and doing mm -hmm. um sales in a dealership for for about a year and change until inflation hit. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. All right. So what what year is this then? Um because he's talking about uh, the inflation. Um we're talking about recently, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. It's recently. All right, all right. So um all right, so the, then you got into that. Um what 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 else cuz I mean it seems like you know you 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 going you're transitioning to a lot which um you know I'll, I'll give you an observation of of everything that I'm that I've collected uh you know while while talking to you which is great man and, and the great advice is not to uh never look at a job for money like that's a great advice because uh, when you go in going to a job thinking about just money you're not even giving yourself the opportunity to get the experience of what it is that you're doing 
you know, and I, I see that a lot, you know, with, with what I do as far as, uh, you know, my career. But, uh, yeah, so, no, interesting, man. So, like, what what, what happened next, man? What are, what are you doing now? Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah, so I did the uh, the dealership thing, and it, and it was going great. I was uh, um, never sold, never been a sales guy before, never sold any, never sold anything in my life. I never even thought I could do it. Like, I, I was like, there's no way I could sit up there and upsell and learn everything um, um, that has – to do with that you know um and um yeah i was a top performer for uh, for for quite quite a few months quite a few months i was a top performer top top one number one top three um and that that was that was oh man i was in cloud nine i was like wow i could really like do this so um what um, so like I said, my last job in, um, in, in New York was in real estate and I have real mm-hmm. estate. So I'm like, I need to get, I need to go back in some kind of field in that, like that's, that's calling me. So, um, inflation hit and it was getting harder for you to upsell, right? You know, people, yeah. you know, I, I, at this point, um, buying the bare minimum and um i'm doing 60 hours making you know not a lot of money if you if anybody has ever worked in a dealership they know you you're working 60 hours you're mm-hmm. gonna be working 60 hours commission based no base salary um so it just started getting real 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 tough and um starting you know when it gets when you're not doing good you, you're not you're not you're not you're not gonna be putting the best of you out there so course, no, yeah. that's difficult. That's the thing, way right? especially mm. when you not feel like you, you you're not one thing mm, that motivate one mm. one thing that motivate a person is when you're doing well, yeah. And when you when everything is going wrong, it's hard to show that impression. Especially in sales, you gotta. I did sell in a retail store, and you gotta know how to talk, how to. Um, how you say? No, it's all strategies. You yeah, know, you strategy. gotta. Yeah, I know what they want and making sure that you could add something to it. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I'm sorry, man. You want to say something? No, I'm saying like you're going to say like you said. Is you're going to know how to talk and also sell product and you making money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you you know that uh, being in sales. I, I remember when you was in, in sales and, um, yeah, it, it, get, it got really tough. But, I, but me, I felt happy about it because I, I i i did something that i've never done and i was very successful at it so i'm like okay in my mind i didn't look at it as a failure or inflation you don't got no control over that but in my mind i was like i did sales oh like and um what can i do next with this you know this is a that like they can't take away from my resume the fact that i did it so so to me i learned it um it's in my resume um i could go get a sales job right now any and anything because i did it any field yeah that proof yeah all right all right cool so um you uh, you you mentioned earlier so you do um own like certain properties now from your from you know what you're doing now um you want to talk a little bit about that yeah yeah so um very early on i um like every dominican um any immigrant you you um you buy land and you buy property back home um yeah not getting too much into it but um Mm -hmm. um yeah i saw them as always as business opportunity rather than me going back home and live of course you know what i'm saying um, I, yeah. I, I would never again. Uh, I'm not gonna say never, but I don't see myself living in the Dominican Republic. So to me, um, they 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 were business opportunities and um, just investments. When I kind of like started learning the bigger picture of um, kind of real estate. Um, so to me, I was really early on in them and, and treated them as such. Um, oh, yeah business opportunities that um later on funded a lot of my um doing all of that crazy stuff like three months without working trying to figure out yeah of course maintaining a family right um so yeah uh that's how 
that's um how I did it. But it it ain't that that those things, um when I say I own real estate, it's not like the flashy way where you're looking at, yo, I sold the house mm-hmm. at a hundred thousand. No, it took a very long time for me to like actually see some money out of it. Um, and a lot of mistakes and um, meeting people, relationships, kind of like, you know, like with builders, developers. Um, I don't know what they call them in DR, but I had a, uh, I was able to get a lot of good relationships with them in DR that guided me through through that. And, um, did you have to go to DR to do, go through all that process or you was able to do it through the phone? Yeah, I was already um, like any like you know we uh, you guys uh, you guys are both born here yes yeah yeah we were born yeah yeah so yeah. us is very normal for us to go two times three times a year so it's it wasn't like i was doing anything extra no no it makes sense because uh that's weird yeah uh, now let's talk about that like people able, you know my people was born here in, in the united states you think that they go much less in dr because I met some people from here that go, but I don't think it's that as much as people from uh, that wasn't born here. If that makes sense, you understand where I'm coming from, Manny? Um, it, I think it depends how tied you are to to the you know the motherland, right? Um, yeah. It, so it, it's gonna depend on your parents. Like my mother's going three, three, four times because a lot of the you know business we, me and her have it together as partners. Um, and um, she was kind of like the one that was like. Um, I guess like my biggest motivator um, when she set me on that path, she always, you know, taught, uh, thought of generational wealth. Um, so she put that in my head very, at a very early stage. Um, so um, it, I think it, it depends how much your parents gone. Like I haven't gone back in like four years. I have to go back now just because the businesses are getting so, um, big and um need more attention as you get bigger you're gonna be you know uh your business are gonna have uh require more of your attention oh of course, I, yeah. so i'm glad so i guess you got a business over there that's mm-hmm. working out so that's good because not too many people i mean i see uh from what i see i hope i'm not stereotyping too much but i know there's people that come from their country over here and send money to their country to build houses mm-hmm. and all that thing and not in- nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, no, no I, I'm not saying it's wrong. But do you think that you also doing be- or do business or it's it, it better just to do with re- uh, houses, real estate? Because there's people that also send money over there to start a business. I know of somebody who send money who have a business over there too. Yeah, and that that can be very successful too. Um, especially like um, yeah, I know people that have you know, like a barbershop brand here that have taken that brand to the Dominican Republic with like how we, how a barbershop is here. Um, it's yeah. different. So, you know, and you, you see it on the Instagrams and stuff like that, where um, things out there look more like out here now. So, but I was real early on t- uh, treating um, my properties out there, like how you would, you know, treat them here versus um, I think like some, some immigrants look at it as like one day I'm gonna move out there. Um, I don't care what goes on here, so I treated it as you know just a, another form of income um, uh, out there. You know, and you do do uh, people have it messed up where it's like they think it's only oh pesos and stuff. Now nah, you're doing over there. They're doing transactions in dollars. Like right now nobody's selling the house like I, I mean i'm not saying nobody but for the most part like a real good land a good pre- piece of property it's getting sold in dollars and everything is legit up to like the uh, up to date with like the stuff out here all of that so um yeah but i was real early on treating it like how you would treat properties out here okay well let me ask you a quick another question about that guy uh, I'm I'm glad that you I guess your mother was able to invest over there. Um, would you recommend more immigrants to invest more uh, real estate in the pro- over there in the country or more over here in the uh, in the United States? Or, or you think it depends on the situation? Both, I say both. If um if you look at uh, 
if you look at real estate as a whole, like a lot of your investors, a lot of, um, and I learned this working in commercial real estate, a lot of them buildings are owned by people that don't live in the United States, like Chinese buyers. They own a lot of those buildings. So why wouldn't you treat your country where you're from just like, you know, like the Chinese or, you know, Ara Ara um, the Arab people. Arab Arabic people. Arabic or Arab? Yeah. From the Middle East um, treat um, investments here. They own a lot of stuff here and they live in, you know, their country, Middle East, Dubai and stuff like that. So um, why wouldn't you treat it that you're from that country like that? Heck, I want to I want to find other countries that I could buy properties right now that um are willing that that are going to grow. So, yeah. I think I know somebody. Uh, I can talk remind me later uh, because somebody was telling me about his country. He's not Dominican. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you may have half uh, Dominican half uh Oh shoot, Nicaragua. I hope I'm not messing up the the Nicaragua. Well, I talk about your, that. I think he wants to invest in another country. Somebody told me about that too. Yeah. But so you think it's a good idea? Because I'm, to be honest, I always been into real estate over here in this country, and I know I. To be honest, I thought it was bad, bad investment to invest in another country because you know I'm not from. I barely travel to the yard, so I wouldn't know better. To be honest, but now that you tell me all this, and I'm learning. Uh, I'm, that's good because a lot of people who was born in this country or not, who think it come as an immigrant might not know that. They might think, oh, why would I invest in another country where I could invest over here too? I'm yeah. only. You know, I, I mean, I own my house um, and I uh, have investments here. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just another investment. It doesn't matter where it is. Heck, man, if they selling some real estate in the moon and it's the price is right, I'm, I want to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might have something in the Mars, man. So, yeah. you, got, you know, Mars. Just, just save up that mo money right there. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it really doesn't matter where you buy it. Um, it just happens that it, it is in my country. So um, okay. I look at it like that. But, yeah, I'm, I'm fully invested in here. All right, awesome. Um, So you, I know you... you we were mentioning earlier that you also into stocks, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the stock game, I'm not. I'm, I'm not seeing like crazy return <laughs> from that. Um, but um, yeah, I um, I, I I I I dabble in that, and um, I make some good money in that, but not like you know, not like what uh, real estate has um done for me mm -hmm. um to, to this point like like stocks really haven't done anything for me uh yeah. significant that i could still like like measure you know uh but yeah i i do i do love um the the stock market and uh because that that has um uh, that transitions to a lot of things in business right yes uh. doing good um a lot of other things are doing good you know exactly yeah yeah it's so it's always good to to read up on it because you you get to see, you know, like well, how what's trending, what's you know what's good, what's not good, you know. Yes. So you know it's always it's always good to dabble in, into into stocks. Yeah. All I, right, man. Awesome, man. But that's so like like um, uh, I mean I don't think I'm successful uh, yet, but you probably ask anybody that's actually successful, they probably tell you they're not successful. Uh, <laughs> right. But, yeah. May Bloomberg still hungry? Trump still hungry? Cook still hungry? Oh, yeah. Uh, Bezos is still hungry. Probably doesn't. Yeah, nah. As humans, you always have that need. Like we always wanna, we wanna up ourselves. We always wanna become better. So you know, you you might have a goal. You may hit that goal, but that goal is no longer that goal. Now you have a bigger goal. You have a bigger yeah, agenda. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I always say because there's people that will settle. That's the worst thing you could do. Like, once you make reach your goal, they will settle. Like, and that doesn't make sense. Like, mm. I always have goal, even if I manage to make it, the goal. And make, if you also, if you're going to make a goal, make sure it's reachable too. That's another advice I always try to get to my listener. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah obtainable goals yeah yeah obtainable and do what works for you right um definitely definitely um and definitely having a plan always having a plan for something and having a backup plan to that backup plan you know <laughs> that's yeah, a, no. that's, that's definitely something i preach 
All right, man, that's awesome, man. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I know that you're a family man. You have like, uh, I mean, you have your wife. You have what, uh, three kids? Yeah, yeah. So how, how is that, man? How, how's, how's that, that family life? <laughs> it is very difficult, um, juggling that with, you know, trying to, you know, um, trying to find out what you want to do. Um, like right now, like I'm, I, I feel like I'm still in the stage where I, I want to find out what I want to do. Um, I think it's kind of like really, really leaning, leaning to like real estate. Um, mm -hmm. really focus on that. Um, I've done, a, I've done so many like different things. Um, but I think like those different things have definitely led me to build a skill set that's very unique. Um, and um like right now my wife is in school raising a family getting her master's and when she's done i'm going i'm going to school um also um so like my job really works for that works like my mm -hmm. scheduling works for that and um i think it's mm -hmm. you know um once you like kind of like start building like that you, you start scaling more you know no i'm glad that you're doing that because like right now you look like in uh i don't want to say in the perfect i mean right now you managed to do most of the goal that you wanted to do and now you open uh, try to do something else so you could up yourself like to level up yourself that's the thing yeah don't be and i'm one thing that i try to how you said we beat myself over here that once you do your goal you have to keep going going yeah. and because there's always things that you could do to improve to do more and like you see, right now you wanna, even though you're doing good, you still wanna go to school again and try to see if you could do something better so you could even level up even more. Yeah. So and I appreciate that. And that's a great example. We need you, uh, listeners, to listen to. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that is definitely awesome, wanna be, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Like, don't be, a, like, I think I, I failed a lot. But um, one time I read this book and it was, uh, it was called, fail fast, fail often. And one of the great mm -hmm. lines was there was um, fail forward, right? So you fail, but you, you, you took a step forward, you know? Um, and it, they talked about Starbucks, right? Starbucks. Um, so Starbucks, what they do is um, they, they're quick to put out a, pro a product. Uh, when they started, they're quick to put out their, you know, model, whatever, uh, out there without you know doing research and development if the customer didn't like it they're like okay they didn't like that we failed at that <laughs> but it's out there you know you're, you're already doing it so you already have a step up on your competitors uh yeah. which is it, it, it and that that's really cool like for instance like starbucks just took out a chicken sandwich out here right the, the, the ch it failed like people hated it out here it's dry oh yeah i don't know nothing about that yeah oh <laughs> that ain't come out here in new york i don't think so yeah so really? breakfast um it's a, a big change uh like you'll have fried chicken on a biscuit like you know how you have a bacon egg and cheese out there yeah chicken on a biscuit is here so how, how big was the chicken was it as big as popeye's chicken or it's a it's a piece of, uh depends on the place you go to um like <laughs> place here is bojangles uh yeah People get, you know, fried chicken on a biscuit for breakfast, which I don't do. That that's that mm -hmm. not to me. <laughs> I think that's something in the South, though. You would think uh, the, the chicken for breakfast. Yeah, fried chicken for breakfast. It might be in the South, or I mean, I, I started to see oh. it now in New York, but I think it's a South thing. But well, I could be wrong. Took it out and it failed here, and they took it off the shelf, and that's it. They don't care. It still continues to be Starbucks. People still showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forward, yeah. Of course. All right. Awesome, man. So, um, do you, do you have any hobbies? I heard of one. You do. Uh, you say you do rock climbing, right? No, no, no. Hiking. Hell. Oh, hiking. Damn, I know. I said. <laughs> why did I say rock climbing? I was thinking about a movie. <laughs> I, nah, I just saw. I just watched this movie recently. I don't know why I thought. All right. So you do hiking, right? I, um, any other hobbies? I like hiking. Um, recently I was I was riding motorcycles. Um, I just sold my bike not not too long ago. Um, I'm into the RC cars. Um, right now I'm into okay. the RC carts and, um, I've learned how to, from being down here, it's big barbecuing is down here. So I learned how to smoke, smoke meat. So, okay. 
You have yeah, the, I need to try to some of those, some of those barbecue. I might I might have to go visit, man. We have to go there just, and eat those yeah. barbecue of yours. Man, we get inspired, man. We we, we got out of New York, go to I, North Carolina. I could, I could. Oh no, man, will convince you to go move to New York. <laughs> he convinced he got convinced people to everything. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I've actually been responsible for getting some people out here and um, getting them in a the house too, so teaching them the process too. So yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, like that guy I met Gary through my friend's cousin. Um, he's a real estate agent here, and he he's doing very well. And um, I think that's like where I'm gonna go kind of like that path so and helping our people helping our community to you know because it is possible you know trust mm -hmm. i was i i am not the most professional i am not the most you know whatever you want to you know uh crazy person that you know people would think that would be a path to being successful that you know i'm a, a first generation homeowner um, nobody in my house um, owned a, a, a home, so I really learned the process on my own. So um, I, I like to, if you ask me about it, I'll, I'll tell you how to how to get it, how to do it. Um, build credit, keep credit. Um, that's very important. That's and, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We could have a whole segment of that. Um, will you will you be willing to have another episode with us? We could we could chime in on that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, because, yeah, credit is very important. Uh, yeah, it is. Been keeping good credit, having good credit. And um, a lot of people, um, I remember me growing up, a lot of my friends, um, they messed up their credit very early on. And um, yeah. my mother was very good at telling me that, you know, you know, credit was this golden ticket. I never understood it till like, nobody has to co-sign for my stuff, right? I have, exactly. yeah, I have a very... Uh, it's a very nice car. Nobody has ever had to sign for it. Um, nobody co-signed for our house. Nobody, you know, I've never needed needed that. And um, um, I thank my mother for kind of like um, teaching me that. Okay. And she no English. <laughs> so it's, yeah. No, but it's funny that like, when you're younger, you go think about like, all the stuff they're teaching us. We won't even think of how much it's going to help us until we actually end up using it, it end up helping us right yeah 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 like yeah it's kind of like if you're a 30 year old man and you go to a dealership um and i use dealership because i worked there and i've seen like so many sad cases of you know xyz guy trying to get this fifty thousand dollar car and you know is calling all types of people to come sign for him and i'm like 30 40 years old like yeah you might not <laughs> um need that car you, you you can't afford it if you need if you course, need yeah. oh sign it you know that's crazy man so um all right cool so what um you have any like mentors i know we talked about that briefly earlier and what yeah. you think about mentoring yeah too. yeah um yeah many mentors but not like like somebody like um so you could be getting mentored and not know that person is your mentor right um mm -hmm. my first job um so like I said, um, uh, Cello knows him, my stepfather. Uh, my first job was a dishwasher in a, a, a restaurant, but it was a private restaurant. It was a club um, for Ivy League school, and it was a union job. And um, in that job, it was it was a nice job, man. I, I thought, um, so I'm dishwashing there, and I'm making, at that time, like 12 bucks an hour, which for that time was a lot of money. And I'm putting in 60 hours, so I'm coming home with a, nice paycheck i'm coming home with like mm. 600 clean 700 clean at that time and i'm like this is it for me this is great like this is i'm retiring i'm gonna be a dishwasher for, <laughs> for my whole life this is great yeah i'm in the back nobody's seeing me and i remember there was this one um so at that uh club what happened was um people from the university were interned there and i met this um and I would love to to connect with him because I want to thank him so much. I met this guy and I still remember his name was uh, Mitchell. And he pulls me to the side one day. Um, I'm pulling a, a late shift and he goes, hey, man, you got a resume? So I'm like, 
I don't even know what a resume is at this time. You know, like, what is a resume? <laughs> so he was like, yo, let's make you a resume. What do you know how to do it? Now, at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm messing with cello. So we're messing with the computer stuff. We're doing Photoshop. Remember, we were doing music and all that. So I know how to work a computer. I know how I need Microsoft um, Word, which now is standard for anybody to know. But at the time... Yeah. No, but back in that, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So he pulled me aside. He was like, "Wow, what do you want to like? What do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life?" Like, um, nah, I was, I'm gonna be dishwasher. I'm making good money. I'm wearing some J's. I'm jigged out. I'm doing the whole thing. Um, so he was like, "Let's make you a resume." I didn't even know what a resume was at the time. So he made me a resume. And to this day, I, I still use that template because I was, I, after he made me that resume, I was like, I, I'm going to quit this restaurant job. I, I don't want to be a dishwasher. I want to, you know, like, I want to be known. I want to be, um, you know, not 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 knocking anybody that do dishwashing or anything like that. But those are definitely those jobs that, you know, you come as an immigrant and you, you do and you stay there, you know, and people yeah. have been able to raise their family, great <clears throat> things with that. But it, it wasn't like, like after he saw whatever he saw in me, uh, I don't know what it was. Um, and made me a resume, um, bro. He printed it out in this nice, paper all of this all of this gave me like 10 copies and he was like go out there put your resume out there go give it to people um so he was definitely to me a very early mentor because like like i said till this day i, I still use that yeah. type of, and um it's very been very few interviews where i don't knock out also a good piece of advice if you ever get interviews go to all of them it's a great practice yeah yeah yeah, I was. Yeah, I never understood that part. I know a couple of people uh, applied for a couple of jobs. They, they only went to a job, the interview that they felt they liked the most. That doesn't even make sense. For all of them, it's yeah, literally like practice. It is. It is practice. Mm-hmm. Because you get better as much more as, more as you do as much as you talk. It's like with anything in life, you get better because yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it's 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 just exercising your practice and um, what did I do wrong, you know, um, stuff like that and um, yeah, but yeah, he was definitely a person that mentored me, but it's it's not like I knew it at the time, and a lot of the people in my life, I, I didn't I didn't know it at the time that they were mentoring me, um, especially when you're young, you have a lot of ego, you have a lot of pride, so you know somebody tells you what to do, you don't necessarily want to hear it, so. Um, looking back at it now, you kind of see the people that wanted to see you do better and put you in that position to do yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, awesome, man, awesome, man. Yeah, now and we could relate to that. Like I said, we were talking about earlier before we started the podcast. Um, that you know, like you, the mentors sometimes they they don't come as somebody that you like. Oh, you know, help me. You know, like help me out with this. Can you mentor me? No, sometimes it's. You're doing something and you have somebody who you can ask a question and then you kind of like build this type of relationship and the person's kind of mentoring you without you even realizing it. Yes. So, you know, like, I, so I, I went through that transition and then once I did the podcast, when I learned, I'm like, oh, this guy did mentor me and, you know, I brought him in, you know, so, uh, you know, you guys could check it out. Is the... Uh, uh, what, 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 yeah, yeah. What was the name of that? You remember the name we put? Yeah, B... Being a business a, owner, a business owner, and a real estate owner. Yeah, something so you like guys that. could check that out. All right, I can put a call on the YouTube, mm-hmm. so you could just click on it right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So, um, anything else, true? You know, no. I just want to say thank you for giving us a chance oh, to wait, interview. But I want to say, uh, Cello definitely, Cello, Cello, um, that man right there sitting right there was a big mentor to me. Um, also, um, uh, good friend, um. Uh, he was definitely a mentor to me because um, once I met him, um, I remember getting my first computer and my mother fighting my mother for a computer. And he 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 was very advanced in the computer stuff. And then like um, kind of like he verified me uh, having a, getting a computer, having a computer because he was doing you know he was doing positive things with the computer where my mother saw it as something negative at at, at the time just like at one point people saw uh cell phones as negative too so um cello definitely um 
big mentor to me, um, taught me a lot. Oh, wow, thank you. Yeah, taught me a lot. And um, yeah, def definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I think even think about that. Yeah, I mean, when I first got my computer, it's similar to your story. I saw a cousin of mine who had it. So I was like, so he got me in the mindset. So I'm glad I was able to inspire you by, by the computer and show you. I, hopefully, I did show you something on the computer because I know I was just doing music with you most of the time. Yeah, no, yeah. But, yeah, definitely. I remember calling him for like if I had a problem with it and like, yo, come over. Man, I caught the crazy, I caught the crazy virus on LimeWire. <laughs> <laughs> who did yo, it? Who did it, right? Like, <laughs> yo. LimeWire was crazy, man. No, but mm -hmm. I do appreciate it. I think he even thought about it that I was, um, yeah, I was able to be a small part of the mentoring. I appreciate it, to be honest. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, man. No, and that's what it's all about, man. It's just helping each other out, and that's how you grow a community. It's just helping helping each other out, even if it's a small things. Everybody has uh, a trait. Everybody has a, an experience. Everybody has some sort of talent. And, you know, if you could exploit that even a little bit to other people, yeah. it, it, it helps out. Yeah. This is how, this is how you build something, you know? So. Yeah. If you, if, if, listen, if you could remotely hold a conversation, um, that's a talent. Um, that's something you, you can put on your resume. Um, uh, remotely, so, uh, you, you get a job doing that. You can get a job in sales. Yeah. You can talk to people, you will get a job in sales. Period. Because I learned that. Like, I, I yeah. practiced it and I did it and I was kind of successful doing that it, uh, for a while there. Yeah. Yeah, no, you never know till you try. No. No, no, no yeah. You never know. Yeah. I mean, it's got that way. Everything, like, I don't know if he saw the first episode, but the first episode, we didn't even know it was going to be an episode. He was talking about uh, about the pack guy. We were like, I got a computer. I got a camera. Let's record. Uh, that's how he started, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, that's how I start with everything. Even with the other uh, podcasts, I did the same thing. Like, I'm the type of person, like, I, I, I'm not scared. Like you said, you cannot be scared of failing. Mm -hmm. uh, we just went for it. Yeah. If it's it, what The worst case that's, that could happen, is, it wasn't good. Yeah. Try again. Yeah, I think I think we gotta do I, a recap. I always learned also like asking yeah. a question is free. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Nope. So yeah. All right. So definitely, man. So um, anything else you want to add to this? Or no, I I, I was gonna say earlier. I want to thank you for giving taking your time to do our podcast because you are taking your time and appreciate I appreciate it, it yeah. for listening to us. And hopefully you let more people know about podcasts. And because like, like I always say, I, I, when we started the podcast, we try to do something different. We want to give our culture more knowledge because I feel like our people, I, it doesn't matter if it's black, brown, but if you got more knowledge, there's a better chance you could succeed. If people don't see that, and don't be afraid of failing because Ask most people that are successful fail. Tell me, Manny. Or asking for help. There's a lot of people here that are willing to help you. And um, it might not be in the way you are asking for it. Like, um, you know, there's a saying, God works in mysterious ways. So, you know, you have to be a listener. Um, and you have to kind of carry that attitude of, you know, you're willing uh, to accept. Right. Um, and that's um, something that's helped me a lot and kept me in peace is um, like, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. And, um, you know, what it is is what it is and what it will be will, will be what it will be. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It was yeah, what it was. So um, um, I think that that's, um, you know, we're, we're on this world to learn. So, and, and, you know, as adults, I think we lose that a lot. Um, when we're kids, we're willing to learn a lot. When you kind of start mm -hmm. um, getting older, you're you're kind of like more afraid of failure, and you're 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 timid to learn. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, I say to people is like, you know, think think about it, think about it like you're a child. You know, what I'm saying if you don't know something, just act like a child and willing to like ask questions and and take in that knowledge or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, yeah. So that that's a, that's another thing, you know. Um, don't ever stop learning, like or evolving. Why would you? Yeah. Because you got old. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, man. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man. So uh, 
you know, we are we out here, you know, we, we giving out the knowledge to people, you know, so we just want to level up the mindset. And, you know, I do want to thank you. You know, you did, did give out some great insight to us. And, you know, like uh, we did have some fun times. I'm st- I'm still looking to go into North Carolina. I need to try that barbecue out there. So, yeah, yeah I think I might do it. <laughs> oh, well, come over. Uh, we have a great, 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 great barbecue. Um, um, uh, I, I make some great barbecue myself. Uh, um, definitely, you guys are welcome out here. And um, I think you love it if you come out here. Thank you, man. Definitely, definitely come out here. And um, that 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 uh, invite is extended to you and your family. So um, Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I've learned people from the South were very welcoming and we, you know, love family. So definitely come out here. All right. Awesome. Awesome, man. So, all right. So, let's, you guys... So I guess we'll just end this then, but thank you again. And like we always say, don't forget to level up to success. All right. All right Peace. Guys. Deuces.